Hello, huge beanie. Here's little blue. Where's little blue? Blue, blue, blue. My kitty's in there. Where's my kitty? Hi, blue. Blue's going in his little carrying case. And here's little beanie. We're going for a walk. So, hi. <laughs> Um, I was just listening to a guy who said, what if you lived your life with more courage? What would that be like? Oopsie. What would that be like? More courage. If I had more courage, maybe I'd go to a dance class. Is courage the same thing as, as um, get up and go? As you get older, you, you get into your comfort zone and you don't, you don't, uh, you know, you don't, uh, like if I go to a ballet class, I could be laughed at, but do I really care if somebody laughs at me? I mean, some young kid, I laughed at old people when they were doing some ballet class. It's just old man. I didn't laugh at him, but I was sort of like, God, he's so dorky over there. He's so spindly. It's like, <laughs> they don't have the spring in their steps that young people have. They don't have the bodies that young people have. They don't have it's a, it's a humbling experience, to say the least. There's a flag. So, what would it be like if I had more courage? You know, it's difficult with this dating because uh, I have so many preferences. No drugs, no alcohol, no smoking. Must live in a reasonable distance to drive. No vaccination. Must be a Trump supporter. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. There's the mountains. There's the mountains. It's gorgeous. It's my little kitty. And um, so I, I really got right with God today. And I realized I need to be in patience and in faith. He said, what happens when prayers aren't answered? Well, it means God isn't ready, and it's not the right time. God isn't ready, it's not the right time. A lot of mud right here. Okay, so I'm going to go get the doggy. It was rainy yesterday. It's kind of lightened up. It's brightened up. Okay, so I don't need my coat. Come on, you guys. Let's go have some fun. Right, Peony? Little blue. Blue doesn't usually come, but I thought, well, today, why not? So, uh, oh, they're spraying. Oh, they're spraying the grass green. Okay. All right. Oh, so we got it in gear. Emergency. Break. That's good. Okay. I'd rather spray it green than poison. That's because the bean likes to eat the grass. And if they're spraying poison, then I'm like, oh dear, that's not good. There's my baby. There's my babies. So I saw this little girl. I mean, she's not a little girl. She's a woman. And she's in her 20s now. She's the smallest woman in the world. And she looks like a three-year-old, basically. A three-year-old midget with big teeth because her teeth grew, but she didn't. So um, she's very tiny, like up to your knee or something. Her hands are like really tiny. And uh, hold on, Bean. She's got the smallest hands in the world, smallest feet in the world. There's uh, Dawn, my friend Dawn, an acquaintance, I would say. Hold on. Yes. And the golf carts, Beanie loves the golf carts. There's little Blue. He's uh, digging around. So we got that little Blue. I miss not being on Instagram. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a social platform. Um, this, this young, this little person, she um, likes to go on Instagram. She lives her day on Instagram. Well, a lot of people live their day on Instagram because we are interacting, we're seeing other people, we're seeing the world, we can, we can express ourselves and we feel socially connected. But does this, become like an addiction where we're not really interacting with the real world. 
So maybe I need to stay off of Instagram and get into the real world. There's little mushrooms. They say cute. They're like little buttons. So that's something to think about. The grounds people working on the stuff. You should be likes to go fast through this part. Yeah, I miss, I miss uh, being witnessed and being interacting, but what were the consequences? Low self-esteem, being attacked, being dis, you know, disrespected. Uh, and it, it really dinged my self-confidence and my, my uh, freedom. Uh, when you hang around with people that are very highly critical, you kind of pull yourself in and you, you don't express yourself fully. But, it takes a hospitable uh, environment to, uh, you know, like, you don't start putting on a play, a Christmas pageant, let's say, uh, not Christmas pageant, but a pageant, let's say a fall pageant, celebrating fall. You don't really put on a fall pageant if you're in the middle of a war zone where you're being bombed and criticized and tomatoes thrown and like, your costumes are the devil, you're, you're a you know, pagan, you're a vain, and you're like, I'm just dressing for a celebration. But I really believe every day is a celebration, and uh, life is, you're the star of your own reality show, so are you going to make it boring for yourself? Or Same t-shirt, same jeans, same chopped off hair. I've proved to God that I'm virtuous. No creativity, no imagination, but uh, I'm wholesome, and I'm, you know, I'm meek and I'm humble and I'm unhappy and miserable. Well, what? Well, how does that? Well, you should be happy. You were worshiping idols. So being creative and being imaginative is worshiping idols. I don't believe that. Any more than painting a beautiful painting is worshiping idols. And if you paint yourself into a beautiful painting of your life, you're creating your own life. You're the director, you're the actor, you're the, you're the sound person, you're the special effects person. You're the makeup artist, you're the costumer. So, you know, is it, is it, uh, are you trying to capture your glory days? Yeah. Your every day is a glory day, not just the past. Are you as glorious as you were when you were young? No, but you're the most glorious you can be when you're at your age. And you don't have to be like you when you were young. Everybody, if they're privileged, gets to get old. The, um, the option is going back to God. Here's a firefly or some kind of, it looks like a cicada or something in the dirt, right by Beanie's nose. You can see that. Beanie's about to eat it. Oh dear, it's fluttering around a little. It's a cicada, yeah. See that? Come on, Beanie. Don't eat the bug. Oh, come on. So we got people playing around, guys. Just messing around wrestling around. It's nice they have fun. And uh, Kitty's enjoying being out in the sun. It's good for her. And uh, I saw this person on YouTube and um, they uh, take their cat in the basket and uh, of their bicycle and the cat gets out every so often, goes into forests and he's real shy with other people. But uh, it's really cute, and uh, I enjoy that. So, yeah, I miss my friends. I guess if you call them friends, I don't think they really thought of me as a friend. I think they thought of me as the enemy. I just didn't know it. But uh, the enemy, they, they, they thought I was the pagan to be attacked and to be destroyed. And that's pretty shocking, really, when you, you were calling them, hi, friends. I love you. But, you know, if they have their belief system and their belief system targets you as the enemy, then that's just the way it is. Life, life is uh, not always so storybook. You know, like the good people are the good people, the bad people are the bad people. It's like everybody's a mixed bag. We're all flawed. Nobody's perfect. 
There's some people that are pretty amazing, but even they aren't perfect. And did these people change me? Yeah, I'm wearing more practical shoes. <coughs> Here comes Dawn. Maybe we should go the other way out. I don't know if she really enjoys beating. Maybe we should just go this way anyway. She can always go around us if she doesn't like. It's really cool and nice here. Very cool. She lost some weight. She looks good, better. So maybe it's just my imagination. It's Clancy, her dog. How are you guys today? Good. You got a suitcase? It's little, my little kitty's in there. His, her name is, hi Clancy, hi cuteness, it's Beanie, hi cuteness, hi Clancy, Ka. aren't you adorable? I love your plaid pants. Thank you, they look like a farmer. Yeah, I don't know if I look like a farmer or not, but I don't know what, I don't know what you would categorize this as. I, I call it artsy fartsy. Um, it's theatrical. And I've come from the theater, so it's appropriate. But you didn't come from the farm, did you? No. But that's Chicago. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. I, I fantasize about being on a farm someday. Really? Yeah. Why not? Animals, horses, nature. We don't have to take care of All right. If you have some help. Okay, bye. See you next time. Very grateful to my friend Lynn Miller. If you go to lynnmillerpsychic.com, you can get a psychic reading, $350 I guess, for an hour and my God, I'm so grateful, so grateful. She saved me, I think she saved my life, honestly. I know she's uh, helped my, my friend, my friend had physical health problems and uh, had needed hormones and was debilitated and she helped her and she's helped me this person's really really gifted so I'm very very grateful hold on I'm gonna get the poo poo one second one second how you doing blue how you doing blue so um one second just gotta let this dangle while I get the poopy bag Yep, I am so much more grateful for my life. Uh, just grateful for the sun, grateful for the trees, grateful for my neighbors, grateful for God, grateful for my dreams, grateful for my health, grateful for my mental health. I was getting so upset. Like, I just didn't want to fit in this this ugly image that they wanted for me. I mean, it just didn't, it's like, imagine if somebody asked you, hold on, let me get this. Okay. Let's see if we're going in the right direction there. If somebody had you dress in a complete 100% opposite, like she said, you're theatrical, maybe you're not theatrical, but somebody said you must dress like Elvis Presley in 1970s, or you must dress like Lady Gaga at the height of her craziness, like whatever that is to you. And, and whatever's opposite to what you are. If, you like, if you're like Bozo the Clown and Whimsical, you have to dress like, I don't know, a secretary. If you're a secretary and very simple, you have to dress like Maria Antoinette. Whatever it is, it has to be completely 100% opposite to what you naturally are used to. 
hair color, hairstyle, everything. So it's very, very um, oppressive, restrictive, and depressing. It's like prison. And they said, oh, well, you know, your fancy clothes are the prison. No, not to me. Not to the theatrical person that's grown up their whole life in theater and ballet and costumes and glamour. To be in a prison outfit of just simplicity was like, very, it's like take all the art off your walls, take all the art off your body and be happy with it. You're not going to be happy with it because it's not you. So it's really nice getting back to myself, uh, wearing what makes me comfortable. Here's what I have on today. I don't know what, it, I just pull it together. I said, I want to wear fall colors. And uh, my sister gave me these shoes got a lot of beading and buttons, really unusual buttons and beading. I call it art. It's like art. It's like, it's got a little heart necklace here. Yeah. So it's a little disconcerting about the dating. I thought I'd get in there and have a date. I just wanted a date to kind of take my pain away, but I guess they call it rebound. And they kicked me off the website, one of the websites. Of course, I showed my titties, but I didn't know the picture. I thought it would just show it for a second, and then I could take it down. I didn't know it was going to get kicked off the website instantaneously. It's like, oopsie. You know, I just need to laugh and say, oh, I made a mistake. Who's perfect, right? Oh, I made a mistake. I'll, I'll learn from my mistakes. One of the guys said, you know, don't you want to make a, a commitment? Because I said it's too far to drive. He says, well, it just shows your level of commitment. If I find something I like, I'd be willing to relocate. Um, and I'm like, gosh, it takes time to get to know somebody. And to have to take three hours of my life for three months or three years, I really don't know. I just, it's too, it's too rushed. You live there, I live here. Oh, my God, for a while we're going to have to be severely inconvenienced. So the psychic did say I was going to fall in love in two years with somebody I was dating. So that doesn't sound like it's going to be happening anytime soon. And usually if you fall in love, maybe it takes two years to realize you're in love. Could, but... And she said he was going to help me with my reading. <gasps> Getting it uh, produced. And about that time, my, my other movie's going to be coming out. So... Uh, that's exciting. And she said really big things are coming. Good things are coming. So I need to stay optimistic instead of like, I'm stuck in this hallway, you know. Uh, I had a difficult uh, online friendship, if you will, relationship. What I thought was a relationship. What I really was was just a project. I was one of his projects to be controlled, to be dominated. It wasn't about love, and I was a fool. And I need to not beat myself up for that. I was gullible, I've always been gullible. And uh, they prey upon people just like me that are controllable. I, do I regret that my hair is like hacked off? Yeah. I'd spent all this money on um, hair growth serum. I'd gotten it down to about my shoulder length. And uh, while well, it was kind of stringy, as I said before, at least it was like nice. I could curl it, it would look good. If I curled it, it looked real pretty. And now I have about this, this is the length of my hair all over pretty much. Yeah, look. But that was six months ago, it was like dumb, dumber and dumbest. It was up here. So it's grown, it's grown a lot. It's damaged from the hair dyes. But uh, my lesson, my lesson's intact. And uh, I'm grateful for the lesson. What, what, what other stuff good came from it? Like I said before, I know I'm a little bit repetitive, please forgive me, but I'm, I'm just sorting this all out. And the lesson was uh, accepting that I'm old now. Accepting, they were telling me, you're old, you're ugly, you're senile, you know, like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, they turn around and say, you're beautiful, but mostly they were telling me I was not okay. And that I was trying to dress young. And it's like, 
Well, I don't know why, just because your body's old that you can't wear new fashions. I mean, you know, I think a mother, just because she's a mom, doesn't mean she has to stop being lovely. Well, you're a mother now. You've got to dress like a frumpy, dumpy mother. My mother was a frumpy, dumpy mother. <sighs> what does that say to your children? It's like, no wonder I didn't want to have children. That meant I had to be like fat, unhealthy, unkempt, you know. Like, I know moms are so busy just trying to get their kid fed that they don't look in the mirror because the kid's crying, they get up, they take care of it. I understand it's a very intense time. They're the lucky ones. They're the lucky ones. I think we're going to have to go this way, Beanie, because there's so much stuff going on this side. Yeah, let's go on this side. Over here, Bean. Kitty's quiet. I guess he's enjoying it. If he wasn't, he'd be making a ruckus. And uh, it's very cool and comfortable. Come on, we gotta go this way. I'm sorry. He kind of holds his ground and just pulls if he doesn't like which He already went this part, so he doesn't want to do it again. But look at all those trucks. Come on. Now he's pulling, so he's making it difficult for me because he doesn't want to go this direction. Yeah, we gotta come over here. <coughs> so my script's coming along nicely. Thank God I'm a script writer because actors, when they get to a certain age, you know, parts fall off. Even, even when you're young, it's hard. But a writer can always be in their world creating and there's not that many people that want to do the work that are good at it. And Lynn does say this is a really good script, so. Come on, she said it's good, it's a really good, it's a good script. And uh, come on, B. It's nice not to stay up till three in the morning, uh, just being bombarded with, you're not okay, you're not okay, you're not, this is how you need to be. You're not okay. You're not okay. You're a piece of trash. You're garish. You're a whore. You're a slut. You're, you know, it's like, it's like, talk about just brutal. And that's who I called my friends. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes they weren't giving me information that wasn't very helpful. You know, like I didn't want to unpack my boxes when I got there. I was so tired. And they were like, unpack your boxes. Just do it. So I was like, okay. And they were saying, don't eat so much sugar. And I'm like, okay. Get your glasses. Okay. You know, things like that. So those things were good. Not everything was bad. I just wonder in my head, did they, did they have any sort of compassion for me? Did they have any sort of empathy for me? Did they, did they like me at all? Or was I just the enemy to be controlled? I think mostly just, the, you know, when you work for somebody, and your job is to do uh, reach an objective. It's not about do I like them or not. It's just how do we reach our objective? You know, how is this accomplished? If I'm rewarded for accomplishing a mission, how do I make this mission happen? It's not like I really like this person or not. You have to stay objective. And they're probably, I don't know. Yeah. So it's interesting how I kind of related to this little person. She was unique, she was different, and she felt famous, and she was famous. Was she really famous or was she just known? Known in some circles, yeah, and very unique. And it's fun to be different, it's fun to be unique. It's also, it's also limiting. She wanted to be normal. Do I really want to be normal? No. Why would I want to be like everybody else? What is normal anyway? And what's the, what's the uh, criteria? Like my friend Lynn, she's a psychic. She's not normal. Does she want to be normal? I don't think so. Why would she give up her psychic abilities to see the future? 
to know things. One time I said, oh, I just can't get the uh, grill to turn on. You know, it just won't turn on. I said, I've tried everything and I just can't, I really want to do a steak for this party. And she goes, there's somebody that lives on either side of your uh, a house that knows how to do it. Went to one side, they, they weren't there. Went to the other side, there was this old man and he worked for the gas company for 20 years or something like that. He knew exactly what to do and he turned it on. So she really does know things. Uh, not everything comes to fruition that she knows, but most of it does. Come on, babe. Get in there. Jump. Good boy. There's little Bean, little Blue. How's it doing, little Blue? How's it going? How's it going in there, little Blue? Are you having a good time? Yeah, did you enjoy that? You got to go today. Was that nice for you? I think he appreciates when I just put him in there because he's too scared to really do it on his own. There we go. Did you enjoy that? Good boy. Oh wow, that's a really cool car. Can you see that? Yellow. That's fun. <laughs> if that isn't attention seeking, I don't know what is. Good for him. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing him. I don't think he's egotistical. I think he's having fun. Anybody that judges it as egotistical is egotistical. Because you project onto other people what you feel about yourself. And uh, I think sometimes these billionaires, they feel so full of themselves that they have to pretend like they're lowly and meek. When inside they feel superior and entitled and better than. And so they dress lowly and meek when they feel grand and uh, powerful. It's kind of a head game they play. Uh, maybe it's necessary, I don't know. I do think they've done a lot of good. And I'm grateful for that. We were talking about politics this morning. Hi, Beanie. There we go. Okay. And uh, um, it's all about the voting situation and the corruption and um, what these guys are doing. Because they're planning stuff. The girls and guys. And um, um, you know, I said, I said um, to Douglas, I said, whatever's happening on the surface. The military's in control, and that we know for sure. If they're letting it seem like the Democrats are getting away with stuff, they're not. They rule the world. They want to give the power back to the people, and it takes time. It takes time to get the corruption out, and they're exposing themselves. These people that did this, they're going to go to prison, and they're going to go to death because it's treasonous to mess with elections because it's the power of the country, and you don't do it. So, um... Yeah, I hope if you guys are getting caught up in the news and all that stuff, just easy and know that it's already been won. The, the battle's already been won. Uh, the good guys are in control. Are they perfect? No. Are they perverts? Probably. Are they wackos? Probably. Are we all wackos? Probably in some way or another. <laughs> what do you think, Blue? Eh? What do you think, Beanie? Eh? Okay. That was nice, wasn't it? I'm going to work on my script today. Anyway, God bless America. And if anybody hasn't told you they love you today, I love you.